281-330-8004. Hit me, me up on the low if you trying to feel these vibes. Oh, baby, I got bars. Baby, I'm ready for a battle. Remy, where you at? Lady Luck, where you at? I got bars. Y'all really, please don't come after me because I can't. I can't. I just can't. Yo, what's up, guys? Me, me, and you're tuning in to a brand new episode of Vibes, the podcast. I just want y'all to know that I have bars and I'm ready to battle whoever coming after me. Like, I got real life bars. I'm sick of y'all because y'all, y'all don't understand what I'm saying to y'all. Um, listen, I'm going to take a break. Y'all listen to this song of the week and I'm going to think about what I just said. Uh, but I really do have bars. Y'all, this is Lexi with Answer Me. Y'all take a listen and I'll be right back. So you fucked with her and you Left for me, so now what? If I call her up and she gon' tell me you was with her Yesterday or no Those couple years was not secure so how am I supposed to believe that you are the one for me for sure? They say you lose some, you get them. I don't take it by some mellow hair. Cause if he chose me, that's just so unfair. I might as well get what I want here. But how are we supposed to move on when the trust is lost? And when the weight is up and get lost, when we lost it all. Yo, what's up? I'm Bianca. I'm Bianca. Um, y'all, that was Lexi with Answer Me. That's L-E-X-X-Y. Um, Lexi is on Spotify and iTunes. Or you can go to her SoundCloud account uh, at Lexi, L-E-X-X-Y. And she actually has a lot of dope songs. So I was feeling that one because it's giving me a Janae Aiko vibe. And I was like, okay, Lexi, girl, I see where you're going. Keep going so I can meet you there. Y'all, so go support Lexi. That's L-E-X-X-Y. All right, y'all. So let's move on. I got this uh, recommendation from my bestie. Hey, girl. Hey, Dominique, girl. So she told me that I should do, like, start doing recaps of the show. 
so that people can understand what the fuck is going on. And so here's my version of a recap because I'm not going to go through the whole show. I don't have time for that. But I will do um, is recap two things. So the question of the week last week was, what's a lie you told your mom to get out of trouble? Um, I have some real trifling friends and people that I know. Um, so we had Alex on here last week. She said she blamed everything on her brother. Um, I had James who said he forged his mama's signature when he had to do Y'all remember when you had to write out lines like, I will not talk in class again? He had to do 2,500 of them things. I think he exaggerated because it had to be like 250. But he had to have his mama sign his. Um, but he put her signature on there. I definitely signed my mom's signature on a lot of stuff. I should probably be in jail for forgery. Um, what else we have? We got Joni who, who's trifling and he said the dog did it and they didn't even have a dog. Um... That's all I remember right now. So, and then I also asked y'all to, you know, send me your answers. You could have emailed me or went to the Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter page. That's Vibes Podcast. Vibes with a Z and not a S because y'all can't spell. Um, Because I I really wanted to know what's a lie you told your mom to get out of trouble. Then I also realized um, everybody ain't got a mama. Everybody ain't got a daddy. So I'm going to switch that. And be uh, politically correct. What's a lie you told your guardian? How about that? Fuck you mean. To get out of trouble. Because I'm woke. I just want y'all to know. Um, And then also last week. uh, To recap the topic of the week was. Are you dateable? And so what I wanted to focus on. um, Was two main points. We talked about a lot of other stuff. But I wanted to focus on. uh, Number one. Who do you attract? Because we're always talking about. As a woman I'm always talking about the man and who I want my man to be and the things that he needs to possess and this and X, Y, and Z. Then I had to ask myself, who do I attract? And then I realized I attracted weirdos and broke ass, broke ass niggas, niggas. Um, in the words of one Michael Blackson, broke ass nigga. Um, that's who I was attracting. Um, and I was definitely attracting um, like manipulators. I had that revelation, um, a few days after I did the podcast because I'm such, um, a mellow and calm person. A lot of the guys that I dated tried to like get over and manipulate me because they thought that I wouldn't speak up for myself, but the me guys had another thing coming. Um, and then I also wanted to, fo- or I also focused on the last week's, uh, topic of the week was who are you when you are dating? I know a lot of people are not comfortable um, being themselves 100%. So that's why you have the people out here who lie all the time or the people who are out here, you know, two different people. It's like when you're dating, you're nice. And then uh, when you're by yourself, you mean this shit because you're trying to impress somebody. So I had to figure out who am I when I'm dating. And then I also came to the conclusion that I'm guarded when I'm dating um, at first because I have to figure out how to trust you, number one. And I have to figure out how to be 100% comfortable with you. And one of the things that um, was my main point was we all have that one thing that we do at home, whatever it is, like you do in the comforts of your own home by yourself because nobody else can judge you. So whatever that thing is, what I said was, if I can't feel comfortable enough to do that thing around whoever I'm dating or um, whoever I'm with at the time, then we shouldn't probably be dating because that means that I'm never going to feel comfortable with being myself around you. Um, so that was, that was last week's episode of Are You Dateable? Y'all definitely go back and check that one out. Um, it was a good topic. And then I had my other best friend, Alex, on there who was telling, uh, and we were just talking shit, basically, but really focusing in on a topic. So that's the topic of the, I mean, that's the recap of last week's episode, Are You Dateable? And again, thanks to my best friend, Dominique. Thank you, girl. All right, y'all, let's move on to some black shit. Girl, what's all this black shit? I don't know, some black ass shit. All right, y'all, so <laughs> first up, I'm so sick of this man. Like, why is he not under the jail yet? So 
Suge Knight's murder case has been pushed back after, get this y'all, his 15th lawyer has resigned. Like how the fuck do you have not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lawyers in my bank account? Nigga, he had 15, 15 lawyers quit on him. You know why they quit? Because Suge Knight's still out here threatening to kill people's families and shit. Like don't nobody got time for you, Suge. This nigga in jail and I'm pretty sure he still got somebody on the payroll. First of all, where the fuck is he getting money from? Like, what does he do? Somebody let me know. Does Suge Knight still own stuff? Does he have money um, over in foreign bank accounts? Is Michelet's ass still supporting him? Because I know that's her baby daddy. Like, what is happening? Where is he getting this money from? Nigga, 15 lawyers have quit on you. What does that say? That means even they was like, you know what? I got a conscience, man. And you guilty as fuck. And I... Don't fuck with you, you little murdering asshole. <sighs> Suge Knight is a murderer, and that's all I know. Um, I'm moving on, because I can't, I just can't with him. Like, 15, 15, my dude. All right, let's move on. So, um, Ed Harwell. Y'all remember Ed Harwell? Um, what was that lady name? Lisa. What's her name, Lisa Wu? That used to be on Real Housewives of Atlanta, like, when it first started. Y'all remember her ex-husband, Ed Okay, so y'all remember him and Keisha Knight Pulliam, Rudy from the Cosby's was married for like 4.23 seconds. So they are going through a divorce right now. So their divorce is in court and everything. So Ed Hartwell is asking the judge to throw out uh, the CTE doctor um, defense. Now the CTE is because it used to play football. So CTE doctor basically examines the brains for concussions and injuries due to, you know, physical hits or whatever in football. And it definitely has some shit going on with his brain. But what he's trying to do is throw that whole defense out. He's telling the judge, throw the whole thing away. Because if y'all don't throw that away, then I'm going to lose this whole divorce case. I don't, I'm trying to figure out what in the, the entire fuck happened to Keisha Knight Pulliam. Because remember y'all, she was dating, um, Tigger, a big Tigger from Rap City. So they was dating and they was looking all happy and they was looking in love and shit. And then they broke up after being together for like, I don't know, two or three years. And then the next two months after they broke up, her ass is married to Ed Hartwell. I was like, the fuck? Did she just break up with Big Ticket? Like, literally two weeks ago? How the fuck? You moved on that fast already? I need somebody to go save Keisha because she's going through. And now she got a baby by Ed and he don't even want to claim the baby. I'm trying to figure out what I don't know is what's going on in this divorce trial. Like, is he trying to take some of her money? Um, I mean, because I don't really know if she got some money left. I mean, she got them checks coming in from the Cosby. What do they call? Um, royalty checks. I mean, he's trying to take some of her royalties. I don't think she really got a lot. Um, the last thing I seen her in was, um, what's that movie on Netflix, y'all? It's a movie called Love Letter with Romeo, with Lil Romeo. And y'all know anything with Lil Romeo in it is, uh, fucking do it. I'm sorry. He can't act. Be killing me. I be killing him. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't really want to talk anymore about that story because I'm somebody just call Keisha and check on her because I'd be worried. I'd be worried about her decisions and men because I, I just don't understand. Um, we're gonna move on in all this black shit. So, a mother was arrested after a video of an infant smoking a cigarillo surfaced on Facebook. Now, I don't know if y'all saw this, but of course. I mean, because we're talking about black shit. It was a black woman. She had her infant smoking a cigarillo. Like, the baby took a puff and then blew out smoke. And she thought it was a good idea to put that on Facebook. And then I saw her mugshot. And then I was like, this bitch looked like she's staying in the backwoods of Texas somewhere. Like, that's some backwood Texas, Mississippi shit that they do. I... I don't understand. People, if you know, like women and men, if you know for certain that you don't want to be a parent, close your motherfucking legs. 
I retract that statement because nobody's going to close their legs. Get some contraceptives. Wear a condom. I'm finna start bringing back the motherfucking female condom on y'all. First off, that bitch look like a garbage bag. But I'm finna have all women putting garbage bags in their coochie. Because y'all getting on my nerves. Because this terrible parenting shit is getting out of control. You got your infant baby smoking a cigarello. Like, they need to put her ass under, up, through, all around the jail. Like, why? Because it makes no sense. And if there are worse case, um, cases out here of women and men and their terrible parenting skills. I'm not even going to get into that. See, this is part of the reason why I don't have children. Not because I would be a terrible parent, but I can't handle other people who are terrible parents on purpose. So if I'm out at the Walmart, because that's where all parents go, at the Walmart and I got my baby and then I see another parent being terrible on purpose. See, I would fuck around and tell my baby to stand right there and lose my baby because I'd be angry at the other person and probably slap the shit out of them for parenting the wrong way. And I was like, you know what? That whole thing is a bad situation, so let me not be a parent. I don't have time. Like, can somebody please exp explain to me. How does that make sense to you? Why? Why would you let your child smoke? And then you put it on social media, knowing that people are going to report you. So shout out to all my Facebook investigators. Um, Y'all the real MVPs. People out here on some fuck ass, fuck ass shit. And I can't, I can't handle it. All right, let's get into what the fuck, Chicago. I'm a journalist. Here go my white woman voice. <clears throat> it's Mimi Wallace reporting live from under the jail. Here are your weekly updates for what the fuck, Chicago. An 18 year old man was critically injured after sticking his head out of a moving red line train and hitting a pole. He was rushed to Comer Children's Hospital and is being treated for fractured skull. How? I can't. Seven years after his first DUI arrest, the Riverside man was arrested again on the same charge in the same place by the same officer. The man failed his sobriety test and punched and kicked the officer before being arrested and taken into custody. This man obviously decided that it was a good day to not be black. See, all this motherfucking colonizing privilege. I don't have time for it. On March 20th, Illinois held its primary elections. J.B. Pritzker won the Democratic nomination for governor, putting up $69 million of his own money. <laughs> Here it comes again. <laughs> Another Donald Trump just dressed in blue because J.B. is a fucking billionaire. I don't, I don't understand. I just I don't have time for any of this. Any of this. I mean, I don't have time for it. <laughs> I can't. All right, y'all. Let's get into the question of the week. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me go back. Those are your weekly updates for What the Fuck Chicago. Boom. There you go. Now I can go for it. All right, y'all. Let's get into question of the week. Um, This week question, when I tell y'all, y'all are some real life petty people. And I'm realizing that... Um, Every single day. So this week's question was, what is the pettiest thing that you've done to get back at someone? I am going to read as many things as I can. So first off, I'm not going to say any names because I know every single person <laughs> that commented. <laughs> so I'm not going to say no names because I'm not going to put y'all business out in the street. Instead, I'll just tell y'all the answers. So one person said that they slept with their ex-boyfriend's cousin because they could and then they slept with the cousin at the ex-boyfriend's house i was like you petty as fuck for that so that that's some petty shit um somebody else said <laughs> said i told i told his wife i don't have time i don't have time so you 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 know his okay you know his wife all right i got you boom um we got another person that said he just moved on with his life. I mean, 
Let me tell you how petty that is when you move on your life. Could you fuck up somebody's entire existence when you just move on and you don't give them a drop of attention? Now that's petty at the highest level. Um, to them, but for you, it's a good thing. See, that's some shit I do. I just move on and then you won't hear a word from me while you over here balled up in the fucking corner about to lose your life. Um, we got another person that said, I put grease in their side and no, I put grease inside their locker and hid their car keys. I'm, I don't understand the grease inside the locker thing. Like, what is that? supposed to do i mean i get it's petty as fuck because if you open your locker and it's just grease everywhere and grease is on my stuff okay i mean i guess it's petty this is my favorite one because i couldn't even handle this um i really want to say your name girl but i'm not gonna say your name so y'all know it's a girl so another person said i called their job on their off day pretending to be them and quit I was mad and now they're jobless. If that ain't the pettiest shit I ever heard in my whole entire existence, I would feel shitty as fuck if somebody was getting back at me and they call my job and quit. Oh my God. Y'all, I couldn't. See, that's that's petty and it's savage because that's some shit I should have did to somebody else. But I, you know what? <laughs> I couldn't even do nothing but laugh at this comment for like 15 minutes straight because I wouldn't imagine doing something that petty. I just could not. Um, we got another person that just said that they stared at them. I don't know how that's petty. I would just, you know, thank you, psycho, as the fuck. I mean, that's what I would think, you're psycho. Um... Who else we got, y'all? I think that might have been it. Because people um, were inboxing me. But then it disappeared. Wait, let me see. Oh, somebody else says she let a really beautiful bonsai tree die. Because they sent... <laughs> because they sent it to me. <laughs> That's, that's petty. I know y'all not into plants and shit, but you understand. You get it. If somebody, I have to really like dislike a person so much that if they send me some flowers, I just let that shit die on purpose. Like I look at it every day and wait for it, the damn flower to die. Yeah, that's petty. You have like evil in your heart. I think that was it. Some other people texted me. Everybody was, um inboxing me on Facebook and I'm not about to go through all of these shits because nobody wanted to comment under the status because they didn't want people to see what they did because y'all some petty, petty, petty ass people. Um, I'm not reading the rest of this. Y'all get the gist. Um, so I tried to think about the pettiest thing I've done. And for the people who know me, y'all know I'm not a petty person. I'm not. Y'all can ask my friends. They might tell you otherwise. They ass is lying. I'm not a petty person. Now, I might say that I'm going to do some petty shit, but I'm not going to do it. Um, and it was really difficult for me to figure out, like, something really petty that I've done. The only petty thing that I could think of, because um, I haven't done any petty things to exes. I literally just stopped talking to them. Um... I haven't done anything petty to friends. No, I'm not the person who's going to be sleeping with your man behind your back or gossiping about you. Like, I don't do that. Um, so the only petty thing that I could think of that I did, so I'm pretty sure I told y'all, I got fired for, from a job, right? And then I could not stand a supervisor. And I, I really wanted to, uh, like, um... Basically, I really wanted to beat that bitch ass, basically. Like, oh, help me, Jesus. I, I, man, woo, I'm saved now. I am so saved. Um, so the thing was, I got fired, right? And then I go out to my car, because I had to turn in my IDs. But the supervisor who fired me sent another person out to collect it, because she was scared. She knew I was going to, you know, break her fucking jaw. I forgot one of my IDs and left it at home. So I was like, I'll bring it up here tomorrow. I had plans. 
brought the I came back to the job the next day to give them my ID. What I really came up there to do was to fuck my supervisor up. Like I had convinced myself, y'all, that I was finna go to jail. Cause that's how upset I was. I was like, I'm finna go to jail. I'm just gonna call my dad. He gonna bail me out. And then I'm gonna get out. Then I'm gonna go back and beat that whole ass. Like, y'all, I went up there <laughs> to, turn, to turn in my ID. And she had already banned me from the building, so I couldn't get anywhere past, like, the front door. That's it. She's, <laughs> I'm turning in my ID to my um, ex-coworker. Why does the supervisor came out of her office, looked up, saw me, and walked right back in that fucking office and closed the locker door? I was like, ooh, that bitch was finna get these hands. That's what she was finna get. Boom. I was finna go to jail, y'all, for real. I mean, that's the only petty thing. And then, y'all know T. Jones. Y'all should know her, because she always doing some shit on this podcast. T. Jones is my girl. We used to work together at that same job. Why she came up to the job with me, like, maybe a week later, and she was like, we finna go up to this <laughs> We finna go up to this job and beat her ass. She, I'm, I'm with you. I'm finna do this. And we both go up to the job. T. had already quit and found another job. Go up to the job. Her ass wasn't there. My ex coworker was like, y'all just missed her. She just left like five minutes ago. And I was like, that's because she sensed that I was coming to beat her ass on baby. I'm a thug. Um, other than that, y'all, I'm not really petty. I don't I do not do petty things. Um, thanks to everybody who answered the question and for everybody else's response that I um, didn't look at. It was a lot of people sleeping with people and all this extra shit and i was like y'all doing the most like y'all petty at a petty petty level and i don't have time for that um all right y'all let's get into the topic of this week which is friends over family and i just i really had to speak about this topic because i've been having some family stuff this week um and i was just like i don't have time for this shit so First thing that I want to discuss is um, when you're talking about friends over family, I want to talk about the lack of support from family or uh, your family members. So, you know what? Well, you know when you're usually, there's usually a black sheep of the family. That's the person who is different from their family. That's the person who has goals and aspirations and went off and uh, separated from the family to go and finish school and to make something of themselves. You usually have that person in the family, right? And then comes your family and their lack of support. So you could have grown up in the family, everybody's selling drugs, everybody want to, you know, all your sisters and, and the women, they don't ever have good relationships with men, they all got four and five different baby daddies, the men treat the women like shit, nobody um, keeps a job, whatever, but you're that black sheep, you are like, you know what, I don't want to be like them, I want to go off, make something of myself, and really learn to love people the right way and treat people the right way. But then you have your family members come in and the only thing that they know how to do is talk mad shit about you. So no, it's never, oh, look at her or look at him. They went out and they got a um, an education and a good job. It's always, oh, she or he thinks uh, that he's better than us. She thinks she's better than us because... She don't come around the family no more because she thinks she better than us. So he think because he work at, you know, a state office or he got a state job, he think he better than us. Oh, look at her. She want to go get married. The bitch thinks she better than us. That's why we don't fuck with her now. So, you know, you have those family members and you have that lack of support. And it's like, all I was trying to do was go and better myself. But then I also have to think about like, Okay, you have those type of family members. I have to understand their behavior. Why do they treat people or treat you the way that they treat you? And I'm not trying to justify their behavior. I'm always trying to understand why people behave the way that they do. So when you have those family members, those are usually the ones who wanted to go out and do what you did. They wanted to go and get an education. Like they had a plan for their lives and then something got in the way and they were not as strong as you were. They could not, you know, 
get over that obstacle. So you went out and you got your education and here you are with your bachelor's degree by the age of 22. And here that person is, they haven't even completed high school. So now they're envious of you because you went out and you did something that they feel like they couldn't do. And you had other people to support you. Definitely wasn't your family, but this is when you found those group of friends or mentees or mentors um, to support you and to help you through your journey with getting your education. And so now you got the, the family members over here who are never gonna tell you that they were envious or jealous of you. So the only thing that they can express is hurt and anger towards you and jealousy. So then everything becomes, oh, I don't like her. I don't like him because they think that they're better than us. So it's like, instead of sitting here and telling me, I wish I had your strength or I wish I had a support system like you, that whole thing is flipped and it becomes, I don't like you, I can't stand you, I hate his ass, I hate her ass, she not allowed over here in my house. And then th those are usually the family members who are always finding reasons to fight you or reasons to argue with you or reasons to talk about you. And um, that's like bringing me to my next point. Of course you're going to have those family members, but then that's when you have to really understand and know who you are. So it's like, you know what? Let those family members talk about me. You can say whatever you want about me. You can get on social media and throw my name under the bus, under the dirt, whatever you want to do. The thing is, you have to know yourself. You have to be comfortable with yourself. You have to love yourself enough to know that that's not going to affect you. And then the most important thing that I've learned, because I definitely have some family members like that, is when you have that support system, your friends in place, then you really honestly don't have anything to worry about. Because when your friends got your back, you really don't need anything else. Because that support system, that friends support system is one of the greatest things that a person can have because I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, no one wants the love of their family because we all do. But as we get older, we get to a place where we understand that I don't need your support. I can still love you from a distance. As long as I know that you alive, I'm okay with that. I just don't fuck with you because I know who you are and I know that you're not changing. So I'm not gonna put any kind of expectations on a person who doesn't even know how to love their self, on a person who doesn't even like themselves. I don't have any expectations for you as far as you know being my family and my support. That's why I have my friends over here. And I know for me, my friends are extremely important because my friends know more about me than my actual family does. So. I, I thought about this, y'all. Like, if you were to win an award or if somebody was to tell, or do a life story on you or something, who would know the most about you? That's a real question. Like, who would know the most about you? And I sat and I thought about that because a lot of people are like, this is my family. This is my mama and my daddy and my sisters and brothers and I grew up with them and X, Y, and Z. But then you also have your best friends or your friends that you've just learned to trust, your friends that have honestly become your family. Those are the people that know those secrets about you that you don't want anybody else to know. So I was sitting there thinking like, if I had to do like a documentary on my life, I would definitely have my best friends do and tell everything about me because they know the most just because I grew up you know with my family and we lived in the same household I can sit and tell you that still to this day my best friends know more about me than my sisters do or my brothers do just because you have those stories about oh no she don't know about you know when me and my brother did x y and z that doesn't matter when you can speak to the character of a person that's when you can attest to the fact that, oh, I know who this person really is. So that's when you you understand that a lot of times, especially 
in our modern day society, friendships are more important in a lot of cases than family, than family members. Your friends are more supportive than your family members. Your friends are the family that you've been seeking and looking for and wanting. Um, and then that goes back to like the lack of support from your family members. I have, I have family members like I've graduated about three, four times y'all with about 47 degrees. And I have one specific family member, not even speaking to my other adoptive family, but I have like one family member, I'll say two, that came faithfully to my graduations. But I usually, even if my best friends couldn't come, it was always like a call, it was always a card or a message saying, hey, congrats, and then me doing the same. Like if I couldn't make it, we always find a way to do that. Um, and then that's just, that's not even talking about just graduation. It's just like anything, any like hardship or even joyous moment in your life that you've been through. Can you attest to the fact that your friend, your best friend has always been there? Because I have countless moments where I can tell y'all my best friends have always been there, but then I can only think of like a handful of moments where I was like, oh, my family or I'll say my siblings have been there to support me. And then that's, that's when, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, that's the purpose of this topic. When I say friends over family, and this is not to bash family members out here because there are good people and good families out here who support their kids and, and whatever their mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers, uncles, aunties, family who support family at all times because they understand the importance of it. But what I'm speaking to is the families who don't even acknowledge that certain people are part of their families. And that's when you get into the importance of your friendship, because it's like, there are people out here in, uh, estranged from their family, who've been estranged for the, from their family for 10 plus, 15 plus years. But then you ask them, okay, well, who's your support system? And it's like, oh, this is my friend, my best friend over here. And they know the best friend and the best friend's entire family. And it's like, that's the only person I know. This is my family. Like they don't know my family because my family doesn't even exist right now. But all I know is they've been my support system for the last 15 years. So I don't have to worry about anything. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about this. Some people don't know when or how to get out and just leave. Because my honest advice is when you are that person and you are surrounding yourself by those type of family members, the ones who are constantly negative towards you, the ones who are constantly judging you, even though you're trying to be different and work on yourself and take different um, roads to complete goals or whatever, you always have those family members who are blocking you, the family members who are st um, steadily gossiping about you, the family members who don't want you to succeed. I told, um, I actually told my niece this. I was like, girl, sometimes you just got to leave and you got to leave your family behind. And I'm like, the only thing I do is check on them, make sure they all still alive. Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Okay, y'all still alive? All right, praise God. That's all I need to know. Because those type of people, that toxicity, you don't need that in your life. Leave. Go out. Start over. Start your whole life over. Because the only way that you're going to succeed or really be at peace with yourself is if you leave them behind. I'm pretty sure there are other ways for you to resolve that. But when you have cases like that, and it's sad to say because a lot of times it's in the black families that we don't know how to support each other because we're too busy um, 
judging everybody. And this is a generational thing. You have black families who all they've ever known how to do is judge their family members based on the mistake they've the mistakes that they've made and not the triumphs that they're trying to get to or the things that they have done. All you ever hear them do is judge, judge, judge. So for me, it's like the best thing I can tell you to do is to leave. You leave, you can check on them every month or whatever, but times like that, when you have those type of family members, you need to leave, you need to go get your support systems with your friends, and you need to focus on yourself and make sure you have good friends um, who are really there to support you because that's a different topic right there. You don't have, you can't just go out and get friends these days because everybody doesn't know how to be a friend. You have to really narrow your circle down. You have those day one people or sometimes you just really run into um, genuine people who just want to do good and be good to you. And so what I've learned is as you get older, or as I get older, my circle of friends has become smaller and smaller because I've learned that I can't trust everyone. Just because I, kn I know you and we hung out, that does not mean that you're my friend. Just because we went out and we had a drink and we had fun this one time at the club, that does not mean you're my friend. That means that I hung out with you. But then I have my circle of friends, my, my circle, my support system that I can call and be like, hey girl, hey, or hey boy, let me um, tell you what's going on with me. Let me sit here and, you know, relieve all my stress and just be on the phone and talking about everything. Or we can go out and hang out and have a drink or have a moment or whatever. I have my, my support system. And as I said, you learn that when you get older, it gets smaller and smaller. Um, but sometimes you don't need 10 people. You don't need 20 people. You need the good five friends or your good three friends, whatever. Because those are the people who you know you can trust um, who has been there for you for as long as you can remember. And those are the same people who you know that you're going to grow older with and you're not going to have to worry about them, um, turning their backs on you because you, you trust them and you know them and they know you and they trust you. So again, that's why I say friends, a lot of the times are more important than, or more supportive than your family members. I think a lot of people are stuck in that whole idea of, um, it's like a morality clause of being loyal to your family. So the, everybody who wants to say blood is thicker than water, throw their whole thing away. Cause I don't have time. I don't give a fuck what's thicker than what's in, and who's thinner than what I don't have time for that. My support system is my support system. If I know that my family can't show me support, they've never shown me support, then I'm not going to waste my time trying to um, get them to love me or get them to like me or get them to support me. I'm going to go out. I'm going to start over. I'm going to find my own support system and I'm going to live my life. And when you do that, then you have those same family members who told you that you weren't going to be shit or you weren't going to do shit, X, Y, Z. You'll have those same family members now looking up to you like, oh shit, I ain't know that. Or I didn't know she could do that. Or I didn't know he was going to do that. You have those same family members now calling you to ask you for stuff. And that's for you to decide. Cause you know, I just try to be a good person all around. Of course, I have those family members. When I was younger, couldn't stand them, didn't like them. But now that I'm older and I'm in a good place, I have those same family members who now call me and ask me for favors, even though they stood in my face and was like, oh, you don't got to ever worry about me asking you for shit. And I was like, oh, okay, we'll see. But it's like that part is up to you, whether or not you want to be that person to reciprocate 
the same type of energy they gave to you, or you just want to be a good person and just be like, you know what? I'm over that. I, I'll help you if I can. But, um, yeah, the last point was sometimes you just need to know when to leave your family. Sometimes you honestly, you have to leave them behind and you have to go out and create your own family and friends and support system. So that's why friends over family is important. Um, I think that's it for the topic of the week. Cause that was something that is simple enough to just make certain points on, but it's also can be a, a very extensive conversation and I'm not trying to get too deep cause I already felt that I was, this will be a conversation that I need to have with somebody else. Um, so that we could do a back and forth thing, but I just wanted to make certain points about friends over family and helping people understand that it's okay sometimes to leave. You're not the only person out there that has a shit family, but that's what your friends are for. Your friends are there to support you and have your back and grow with you and y'all grow together and figure out how to just be lit as fuck in life. So that's it. Um, so I'm moving on. I'm moving on to Ratchet Drink Chronicles. <sighs> All right, y'all. So, in Ratchet Drink Chronicles, y'all, today, I am uh, taking a day off. I never thought I would say that, but I am. I'm not drinking any kind of liquor. I'm drinking coffee because my life almost ended on Saturday, and I have been recovering um, ever since, and I just... I just don't have time. I lie. My, my life almost ended on Friday because Saturday I spent recovering and I just don't have time. Um, so today's choice is a caramel coffee with cream in it because I needed coffee in my life. So shout out to all the hungover ass people who thought that they could handle more than they could, but then they found out, bitch, no. Um, I just basically found out that I'm getting old like as fuck and I cannot drink how I used to like in my mind I'll be at, I'll be like I can drink you under a bar and then I go to the bar and I have one drink and then my body be like bitch sit your ass down you can't do nothing and that's what happened to me um I'm gonna tell y'all so moving on let's um to my shout outs so let me tell y'all what happened to me on Friday <sighs> So first off, I want to shout out to the University of Chicago police officers. Um, every payday, my coworkers and I, including the supervisor, we go and we have lunch at our uh, place that we choose. So we chose this place in High Park in Chicago called Mickey's. I'm getting out of my car, walking across the street. I'm on the phone with my supervisor like, hey girl, are you here? She's like, yeah, we talking. I look up and this man walks in my face, cocks his fist back and was like, get the fuck out of my face. Like, y'all, he was about to knock my ass out. And I just turned around and walked back across the street to my car. And I told this to my best friend, like usually somebody's reaction would be, oh my God, he's finna punch me like I'm scared. That wasn't even my reaction. I legit, the, the thought that popped up into my head when he did that, I was just like, Ugh. I do not have time to be hit today. And I like, I don't have time for this today and walk back across the street. <laughs> and a dude like was legit following me. So I'm trying to figure out how to cross the street. He keeps looking at me. He walks up to another woman and says something to her. I couldn't hear it. And so finally I just ran across the street and he was on the opposite side of the street, but he kept like pacing, looking at me. So I go into the restaurant and there was this man um, and I told him, he said, call the police cause he'll need to be out there. So I called the police and the university of Chicago police was literally there in like 45 seconds. I'm not lying. But by the time they got there, he hopped on a bus and then I flagged the police officers down and I was like, uh, my coworker, my supervisor and I was like, he's on the bus. Police officers drove down the street, stopped the bus, got him off. I had to get in the back of the car, go identify the man. Um, and, you know, tell them my whole witness statement about 
what he said to me. Um, long story short, now I gotta go to court so I can uh, testify. Because I was like, I came over here to get a fucking salmon burger. That's it. I really came over here to get a turkey burger, but they ran out of turkey. And now I got this whole incident that I got to attest to and be a witness to because this crazy ass nigga want to go around telling women that he going to punch them in the fucking face. Like he was only, um, trying to attack women. Cause there was a few men that walked, but he said nothing to the men. It was always the women. So that was, that was just like Friday afternoon. And then I was like, Oh my God. Like I really just came here to get a fucking burger and then leave work. Cause I didn't plan on doing any work at work. And then Friday night, I went out with my friend. Uh, so this is my next shout out to Eric and Connor. I went out with my friend Eric, right? And we ended up going to this old people's bar. It had to be like 45 and up. And we in there drinking and Eric got some watermelon Long Islands. And the bartender literally put 99.997% alcohol in the drinks. And I drank the first one and I was cool. And then there was a DJ at the bar slash club. And he was like, I need four couples to get on the floor and do this steppers contest. And so, um, Eric's friend Connor was there. I was like, you want to, you want to do this contest? And I was like, you win a hundred dollars. And so I'm like secretly a 63 year old woman. So I can step and me and Connor got on the floor and we cut the fuck up. And then we were cheated. We were cheated and we lost to a real old couple who had to be at least 69. And I was like, it's cool. They old for real. And I got hot and I went outside to get some air and that air hit me. And I think it was a wrap right there. Cause when I came back in the club, y'all, I was like legit drunk as fuck. I had like one and a half. Cause I ordered the next round of the watermelon long islands. And I drank like half of that. Again, it was like 99.97% alcohol. I'm looking at the bartender making a drink. This hoe is having a conversation. She just turned the bottle of alcohol upside down and just pouring shit in the mixer. And she was like legit pouring alcohol for about 20 seconds nonstop. And I was like, I'm going to die. I am going to die. But I came back in the joint. Yeah, I was in the bar slash club with old people. I had to go in the bathroom and I had to throw up. And then that's when I realized I was old as fuck. And I was like, I need so much water. Please keep handing me water. And then shout out to the girl, the random lady at the bar who came over and was helping me out also. Because Eric and Connor was helping me trying to, you know, make sure I was okay. But then you had the random lady at the bar who was like, hey girl, drink some club soda. We we women, we got to look out for each other, girl. You going to be Okay. I drank a lot of water. I made it home. Um, I was drunk as fuck still on Saturday. And I was like, I can't. I just can't do life today. Because I feel like I was going to die. So, shout out to them. That was my weekend. And I was just like, I can't. I can't live like this. I will not be drinking anybody's Long Island. From now on, I'm just drinking beer and wine. If I can't do that, I don't want to drink anything else. I didn't drink anything for the remainder of the weekend. Because I was like, I don't want anything that smells like alcohol. Yeah. That's my weekend. So those are the only shout outs. Um, at the end of the show, y'all. That's that's it. Because I don't have any more shout outs. Because, uh, let me see. Anybody else that I want to shout out? I just want to shout out my bed. My bed was comfortable as fuck. And it got me through a lot of things this weekend. So shout out to my bed. You the real MVP. I see you, girl. You the real one. Um, end of the show, y'all. Make sure you go and follow Vibes Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's Vibes with a Z and not an S with your dumb ass. Vibes Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Also, we're on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Google Play Music, CastBox, and Stitcher. That's Vibes, V-I-B-E-Z, podcast. Um, make sure you type in my name, Mimi Wallace. That's M-E-M-E, -M -E, Wallace, Vibes Podcast. Um, 
And when I pop up, make sure you subscribe, download, and listen to past episodes and catch up on the new ones. Tell your friends to tell their friends to tell their friends um, because basically I'm trying to be famous. Um, Also, if you know anybody um, who's a music artist, um, independent music artist, and they would like to have their song featured on the Vibes podcast, have them email their songs to A-S-K-V-I-B-E-Z at gmail.com i'll definitely take a listen um and if i like the song i'll definitely put it on a song of the week give y'all a shout out and all that good stuff um i think that's saying y'all that's all i got i think that's the end of the show 281-330-A004 hit me me up on the low if you trying to feel these vibes bars on baby now who ready who ready Sick of this shit. I got bars. And we out this B-I-H.